and going forward. Joining me right now is Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I want to ask you first about the White House and the White House response. Other than it seems that the White House was lying, it seems, about why they first announced why they first canceled the president's trip to the CDC. We now know that mm. that is now back on. Have you heard anything about what the president was talking about this morning when he said that there is a possible positive case of coronavirus at the CDC? No, uh, we don't have any further information. And I, I have to say that one of the reasons why my subcommittee and our oversight committee mm -hmm. is convening a hearing into this very issue of COVID-19 next Tuesday is because of the lack of transparency of information with this administration. I'll just give you one example. Um, you know, on the CDC website, they were listing the number of tests that were being conducted nationwide for COVID-19, but then suddenly those numbers were removed from the website. And it appears that the White House is trying to uh, prevent the public from knowing the full scale of the outbreak, uh, perhaps for political well, reasons or others, like they said but that's that, exactly the wrong response. Well, they, it's, it seems that they were saying it was hard to keep up and keep it accurate, um, with, but I, I gather that you don't find that an acceptable answer. No, absolutely not. You know, another thing that they refuse to do is to uh, explain exactly where the cases are. This is extremely important for public and state uh, health authorities because they need to know uh, as they get prepared um, to be able to test and treat people. Um, they don't want to tell where the tell us where the confirmed cases are. They don't want to tell us the number of tests that have been conducted. They don't want to tell us how many people are presumptively uh, positive for COVID-19. And this is deeply disturbing. So let me ask you this. As you mentioned, your committee, your committee, the subcommittees of the Oversight Committee are going to be holding a hearing. And obviously, you've got a lot of questions. As this crisis is yes. literally still unfolding and there is clearly a lack of information and a need for more testing and more data, that is paramount. What can you say to folks that will give them any confidence that Congress holding another hearing about it is going to get them a tangible answer come next week? That's a good question uh, that they should be asking. And the, and the reason why we're having this hearing is to bring some sunshine um, as to the answers to some critical questions. Um, I think that when the CDC, the HHS, uh, FDA have officials there and they're having to testify under oath as to what the answers are, at the least it gives state and local authorities more information than they had before and it obviously sends a signal to the administration and others that the public is going to continue to demand answers through Congress. There are a couple other subjects, however, that uh, we are also going to be uh, grilling these folks about. One is uh, we're learning that uninsured and underinsured patients may be discouraged from being tested and treated. Um, just the other day, someone in Florida went to get tested. Um, Thankfully, he, would, he came back negative for COVID-19, but he was handed a bill for $3,270. Um, this type of bill is going to discourage uh, others from getting tested, and then uh, they'll get That's sicker. That's a place that Congress And then the rest act, of us right? are at risk. That's a place Absolutely. that Congress could act. Absolutely. Isn't that also something yes. that could have been inserted into the $8 billion of emergency funding the president just signed? Yes, and... Um, uh, I'm hopeful that state and local health authorities will use a portion of their funding for those purposes. Um, and then the last piece of this that um, people also need to be aware of is that, you know, this whole testing issue is so um, has been so botched that we're really concerned that um, folks are not going to be tested in the numbers that we need. You know, in China, they're testing people at the rate of 10,000 a day. And here, there are reports that we've conducted no more than 500 tests total across the country. So the health, um, that's the HHS secretary said this morning that they are ramping up sending out the test kits. There's going to be, he, he says, as many as 4 million tests available next week. Do you trust the number? Do you applaud that they have ramped up where there clearly was a deficiency in getting test kits out originally? Well, I'm glad that they're ramping up. 
uh, the, the number of testing kits that are being sent out, but making claims that four million tests uh, are going to be able to be conducted when the numbers just aren't adding up and we don't have information uh, that would otherwise justify those numbers, I mm -hmm. think is yet another of the types of irresponsible claims and statements that do two things. One, they undermine public confidence, which could lead to panic. Um, we see the stock market gyrating up and down in part because of statements like that. And then two, uh, some people might actually believe the administration when they make certain <laughs> statements that are just plainly uh, incorrect, like the president saying that it's okay to go to work with coronavirus. You know, that type of statement would really um, cause the acceleration in the spread of the virus, not uh, stopping it, which is what we need right now. Yeah, well, more information, regardless if it scares people, it doesn't matter. More information is required in order to stop what is a public health crisis that the country and the world right. is currently facing. Congressman, thank you for coming in. Looking forward to seeing what comes to your hearing next you. week.